Okay, so the question is, what factors might affect my commercial truck accident case? Yeah, so part of evaluating a case uh, involves understanding all of the different variables that are involved in a personal injury case. And in order for us to be able to advise someone on the factors that influence the value of their truck accident case, uh, we typically break it down into four categories. And it's fairly similar to any other personal injury type case. So the first category that we like to think about is the liability. The second category we like to think about are the damages. The third category we like to think about is the solvency of the defendant or is there a good pocket to collect the damages from. And then the fourth factor we like to talk about are what we've referenced as mad factors. So the first factor, liability, that just means will the law hold the commercial trucking company or driver legally accountable for causing the crash or causing the injury. Sometimes that's cut and dry. Sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging if you have a he said, she said type uh, situation like a running a red light. If both parties are claiming they had a green light at an intersection, for example, that can cause some challenges. But at the end of the day, sometimes liability is clear. Sometimes liability is less clear. The second factor, Aaron, we've talked about are damages. Maybe you can talk a little bit about damages. Yeah, damages in Texas means the injuries, right? Uh, in Texas, we treat that in, in two different worlds. There's the economic damages and there's the non-economic damages. Economic damages, people probably already understand. It would be your lost wages, your medical bills, both the past, what happened before you, you end up getting the case done in front of a jury and the future. What happens, you know, when you're 80 years old, that's all going to be encapsulated in our, our analysis of your economic damages. The other one is the non-economic damages. This is your pain and suffering. This is impairment, which is kind of like disability or the things that you can't do that you'd like to do better or more easily. Um, and it's going to include disfigurement. And you might think, well, who's, who's going to be disfigured in a sore back case? And a lot of that is, is if you get a surgery, right, you're going to have a scar. Um, so, you know, those are our, our main elements of damages. And then there's something called punitive damages, which is another thing you can collect, but that has to do with the bad behavior of the defendant of the trucking company. Um, and that goes into mad factors, which is one of the things we mentioned earlier. But before we get there, we need to talk about the, the other thing you mentioned, which was the solvency or the amount of insurance coverage that de the defendant might have. I mean, if I'm sitting here listening to this, I'm thinking, well, you know, it's a trucking company, surely they have millions of dollars, right? Yeah, unfortunately, that's not entirely true. Um, it doesn't necessarily take a lot to operate a commercial vehicle in the state of Texas. It's a very business friendly state where most anyone can go and create a business entity that exists and go and get their commercial trucking license. And as long as they meet the minimum insurance requirements, they're legal to be operating on the road. Sometimes they're operating on the road without meeting the minimum insurance requirements and don't have any insurance at all, unfortunately. So we have to look and see whether or not the person who caused the commercial trucking accident actually has insurance. What's the amount of the insurance? Are they a viable business versus kind of a one man shop who doesn't really have any assets uh, that could be collected in the event that we secured a jury verdict? So a lot of the work that we have to do to evaluate a case and help a client understand what the potential outcome might be is learning more about the person or the entity who caused or contributed to the collision to begin with. Yeah, and that's where we start to run into that last category of of mad factors, you know, and when we say that we're talking about the things that would make a jury upset because we're we've said it before in other uh, answers, but we're in the prediction business. You know, we're trying to predict what a jury would do with the facts of a case, with the judge's instructions to apply the law of the state of Texas to these facts. And when we get facts back like you know, the driver was sleep deprived or the driver was on methamphetamines or the driver was drunk um, or that the business has been cutting corners with their maintenance in order to make more profit. Uh, that is the kind of thing that juries won't tolerate because 
they're being asked to set the standards of our community. That's what keeps our streets safe. That's what keeps our kids safe. And juries um, have a track record in the state of Texas of, of responding to that. And so those mad factors that we encounter in litigation can uh, greatly enhance the value of the case. Uh, we won't know that until we get deep into it, but you can still get oriented if you call us. Uh, we'll give you the lay of the land with any particular case. Uh, we can pull the police report for you. We can analyze it and there'll be no pressure in, in that.